In this video, we're going to learn about detached threads using the POSIX thread library in C. So detached threads are in contrast to what are called joinable threads. And joinable threads work like this. We would call pthreadCreate to create the thread. The thread is going to do some work. Then pthreadJoin would pause and wait here for this thread to complete its work. If the thread's already completed its work by the time pthreadJoin executes, it wouldn't have to pause. But pthreadJoin is going to wait here for this thread to complete its work. Now a detached thread looks like this. We would call pthreadCreate to create the thread, and the thread is going to do its work. But we also call pthreadDetach, and that's going to make it a detached thread. Now a detached thread is just going to go on and on until our program exits. And at that point, when our program exits, that's when that thread is going to release any resources it's using. So there's many potential use cases for this type of thread. Let's say, for example, that our program has some sort of background process that we want to occur periodically. That would be a great candidate for using a detached thread. So in this video, what we'll do is create an example program where we have a log function running in the background. And every one second, that log function is going to log the current day and time to a log file along with the current state of our program. So up here, the first thing we'll do is create a couple global variables. We'll say file star log file, and that's going to be our log file. And the state of our program is going to be the number of incidents that have occurred, where incidents could really be anything. So we'll say int incidents is equal to zero. And our program is going to give the user the ability to add to the number of incidents that have occurred. So we'll say int input is equal to zero. And starting off with the number of incidents being zero, we're going to give the user the ability to enter in the number of incidents that has occurred since the last time they did. So we'll say printf enter negative one to quit backslash n printf new incidents colon. And we'll use a scanf to take what they enter in and store it into this input variable we've created. Now, if they don't enter in negative one, that means that they don't want to quit. They want to add to the number of incidents that has occurred. So we'll say incidents plus equals the input value. Otherwise, if they do enter an input value of negative one, then we're going to quit. So we're going to continue to do this until they enter negative one, then we'll stop. So if we compile this and run this as it is now, we have a simple program that is going to repeatedly prompt the user for a number of incidents. And they can put in whatever number they like, whenever they like, and the negative one is going to quit. What we're going to do is use a detached thread as a bit of a background process. And each second, we're going to have that detached thread write to a log file, the current number of incidents. So the first thing we'll do is open the file. So we'll say log file is equal to f open log.txt for writing. If this doesn't work, if f open can't open the file, it's going to return null. So we'll check for that. If log file is equal to null, then we'll do a printf saying error opening file and we'll do a return one and we're going to return one here because returning one is a signal to the shell to the terminal that something went wrong in the execution of our program next we can actually create the thread so we'll say p thread underscore t thread so this thread variable here is something we're going to use to create and manage our thread so next we can actually create the thread using pthread create. We're going to keep track of the return value of pthread create just in case there's an error. So we'll say int return value is equal to zero. And then we'll call pthread create. So we'll say return value is equal to pthread create. And the first argument is going to be a pointer to that thread variable. The next argument is going to be null. The next argument is going to be a pointer to the function that this thread is going to run. 
we're going to call that function logger. So here we'll say and logger. And then our last argument is also going to be null. We could optionally give some configuration options when creating the thread, but the defaults are going to be fine for our purposes. Now, if pthread create fails, it's going to return a non-zero value. So if the return value doesn't equal zero, there's been a problem. So again, we're going to return one. Next, we're going to call pthread detach to make this thread a detached thread. So we'll say return value is equal to pthread detach, and we give it our thread variable as an argument. Now again, if pthread detach fails, it's going to return a non-zero value. So we'll say if the return value doesn't equal zero, we know something's gone wrong, and we're going to return one in that case. So now we've created a thread, and we've made it a detached thread. And that thread is going to run the function logger. And the logger function is going to write a log message to the log.txt file every second with the current time and the number of incidents. When we're done, we should close our access to that file. So down here, we should have fclose, and we'll say log file. Now we can actually create the logger function itself. So up here, we'll define the function. We'll say void star logger. So the expectation when using pthread create is that the function we give a pointer to here as an argument is going to return a void pointer. In this case, we're just going to return null. Now what we'll do is have an infinite loop. And that infinite loop is going to have a sleep function that's going to cause it to pause for a second. To make the infinite loop, we're going to include stdbool. So we can use the true value. We'll also include uni std.h, so we can use the sleep function. And because we're using pthreads, we also need to include pthread.h. Down here, we'll now make the infinite loop. We'll say while true, and we're going to sleep for one second on every iteration of the loop. Next, what we'll do is generate a timestamp string. So that way, each log message is going to include the current time. To do that, we're going to use functions in the time.h library. So the first thing we'll do is include the time.h library. Now, these functions are covered in more detail on a video I made on the time.h library specifically. So I'll post the link to that video in the description in case you want to know how these functions work in more detail. But basically what we're going to do is create this time underscore t variable called current time for storing the current time in a certain format. We'll call the time function and we'll give it a pointer to this variable to get the current time. Now to create a nice string representation of the time, it's helpful if we can get this time in a different format. So here we'll say struct tm star tm is equal to local time and current time. So we're calling the local time function. We're giving it a pointer to that current time variable. It's going to put the current time into a struct format. Then we're going to call strf time. And strf time is going to use that struct format for the time, and it's going to produce a string representation of the current time. We're going to have to store that string somewhere. So we'll create a character array. We'll say car timestamp 256. And then we'll say strf time. We'll give it the timestamp character array, the size of that character array, and then we'll give a format string that's going to define the format of the timestamp. And we'll say percent x at percent h colon percent m colon percent s followed by the argument tm the actual struct based representation of the time so what this will do is produce a string in the timestamp character array and it's going to have this format it's going to have the month day and year followed by at followed by the time in terms of the hour, minute, and second. 
Next, what we can do is call fprintf to write the actual line to the log file for this second. So we'll say fprintf log file, and then we'll have as a format string here, percent %s colon percent %d backslash n. So the string we're gonna output is going to be the timestamp, and that percent %d integer we're gonna output is going to be the number of incidents. So we're gonna to write to the log file the string, which is the timestamp, colon, space, and then we're gonna have the number of incidents followed by a new line. So about every second, we're gonna to write to the log file this line here. So we'll save this and we'll do recompilation and we'll give it a try. So we'll run it and then we'll say, let's wait a few seconds. So for a few seconds, we should have log messages showing zero. Then we'll put in some number of incidents. So we'll say one and we'll wait a few more seconds now. Then we'll put in 10 for the number of new incidents. Now I've got 10. Now let's enter some new incidents in a faster amount of time here. And then we'll quit. Now if we say cat log.txt, we can see the log messages. And notice what we get here. We get that long pause at the start where we have at this date, at this time, zero because initially there is zero incidents. Then after a long number of seconds of pausing, we entered in one. And that's why we got one here now for the number of incidents. And then after another long pause, we decided to enter in 10. And that's why we have a sequence of 11s below the sequence of ones. Then after a briefer pause, we decided to enter incidents in quick succession. And that's why down here, we then have a rapidly changing total number of incidents in the log. So as the user was manipulating the state of the program, we were able to keep track of what was going on and when it was occurring using this detached thread that's generating this log file for us. So that's one example of how we could use a detached thread. Hopefully this has been a helpful introduction to detached threads with the POSIX library in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.